Career Paths Agriculture Neil O'Sullivan, James D. Libin Copyright Express Publishing All Rights Reserved Book 1 Unit 1 The History of Agriculture Exercise 5, page 4 The Development of Agriculture, Chapter 1 Agriculture began in the area known as the Fertile Crescent. The area is a hot, dry desert, but it has two of the requirements for farming, good soil and a water supply. Many early farmers used the Nile River as a water supply. The Nile River floods at the same time every year. Farmers planted crops before the floods. This helped their plants to survive in the desert. Later, farmers created irrigation ditches. They moved water from the Nile River to their fields. They could cultivate crops any time of the year and harvest extra food. Producing extra food was important. Later farmers fed animals with it. These domesticated animals became another important part of agriculture. Exercises 6 and 7, page 5. Excuse me, Mrs. Anderson, I have a question about the first farmers. Great. What is it? Well, they were in a desert. How did they irrigate their crops? Oh, with ditches. They connected their fields and the Nile River. OK, so water moved through the ditches to the fields. Exactly. Then, I have another question. How did they control the water? The ditches had gates. They opened and water flowed through. Unit 2. Plant Products Exercise 5, page 7. Support your local farmers. June the 10th. Come to the farmers market this Saturday, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Main Street. This year's harvest is the best yet. Fresh food. Buy fresh fruit and vegetables for a good price. Fruit. Delicious melons, strawberries and blueberries. Vegetables. Fresh broccoli, peas and lettuce. We sell tubers and legumes too. This week we have Thompson's granola. Thompson's cereal crops are grown on a nearby farm. Clothing. We offer some industrial crop products such as hemp shoes, shirts and hats. We hope to see you on Saturday. Exercises 6 and 7, page 7. Welcome to the farmer's market. Can I help you with something? Yes, please. I want some fresh fruit. These strawberries are perfect. We picked them yesterday. Oh, good. And I'd like some potatoes, too. How much are they? A three-pound bag costs one dollar. I'll take a bag, thanks. OK. Anything else today? Yeah. I saw your ad for granola. Do you have that? Yes, we do. Cereal crops are grown on a nearby farm. Unit 3. Animal Products. Exercise 5, page 9. More than a meal. We rely on animals for a number of products. Some are more obvious than others. Animals, milk and meat provide us with protein. We make clothing and furniture with wool and leather. In addition, there is a long list of animal by-products. We use them every day, but we don't always know it. We render fat or tallow into tires, soaps and candles. Marshmallows, buttons and tape include bones and hooves. Wool is often used in carpet. Even baseballs use animal products. Animal by-products are found in unexpected places. Thanks to rendering, very little goes to waste. Meat is just one of many products that we take from animals. Exercises 6 and 7, page 9. Listen up. We have a new product to sell. Miss Smith will tell us about it. OK. Customers want natural products, right? So we made an all-natural soap. What do you mean by all natural? There are no extra chemicals. It's just the basic ingredients. Sounds interesting. Will it be expensive? No. After all, the main ingredient is tallow. I'm sorry. What's tallow? Oh, tallow is basically animal fat. It's used in most soaps. 
And it's cheap? Very. It's a byproduct that few people use. Unit 4 Soil. Exercise 5, page 11. Culty advice. Dear Green Thumb, my tomatoes are dying. They get plenty of sun and water. What am I doing wrong? Tom G. Dear Tom, check the soil. Tomato roots need the right amount of water and air. They don't do well in sand or clay. Both have the wrong soil structure. Sand particles are too loose to hold enough water. Dense clay prevents aeration. You need a soil texture in between those extremes. Loam with high silt is usually good. The other issue is nutrients. A soil's parent material determines what nutrients are in it. You can improve the nutrients by adding hummus. Exercises 6 and 7, page 11. Hi, can I help you with anything? Yes, I need some soil. Is this for indoor or outdoor plants? It's for indoor plants. What kind of plants is it for? House plants? Flowering plants? Vegetables? I have some spider plants. They need to be put in larger pots. In that case, you should use Wonder Grow. It has good aeration and holds water well, too. OK, I'll take it. Thanks for your help. Unit 5. Water. Exercise 5, page 13. Drought continues. San Fernando, the Central Valley's current drought is the worst in 50 years. It started five years ago. Average rainfall in the valley is down 35%. Less rainfall in the mountains limits the water cycle in this already arid region as well. Many rain-fed crops are dying. Recently, many farmers dug ditches to irrigate them. They used extra groundwater from their wells, too. Many experts say that will create water shortages in the future. Expect higher prices for many fruits and vegetables this summer. Peaches and nectarines are an exception. Local farmers are growing drought-resistant varieties of those crops. Exercises 6 and 7, page 13. I'm worried. My vegetables won't survive if this drought continues. I feel the same way. My lettuce and cucumbers aren't doing well. What are you going to do about it? I might expand my irrigation system. That could be very expensive. I agree, but I don't know what else to do. You could always plant drought-resistant vegetables next year. That's a good idea. It will cost less, but it won't help this year. Unit 6. Seeds. Exercise 5, page 15. Cold weather hybrid broccoli. Bred for superior seed vigor. Seedlings survive in temperatures down to 37 degrees Fahrenheit. Germination. Soak seeds in water overnight to remove hard coats and end dormancy. Place in 70 degrees Fahrenheit soil to germinate. Location. Sow in a place that gets full sun. Sowing method. Use a pen or similar shaped object to prepare holes 0.5 cm deep, 2 cm apart. Drop one seed per hole. Cover with soil. Water. Days to sprout. 7 to 14. Days to maturity. 58. Harvest. Cut buds before they flower. Price. 50 cents per 100 gram packet. Bulk orders of 100 or more receive a discount of 10%. The New Gardener. Page 17. Exercises 6 and 7. Page 15. Hi there. Welcome to Braxton Farms. How can I help you? Hi. I'd like to buy some seeds. Great. What varieties are you interested in? I want some watermelon, the super king, and some cantaloupe, the royal gold. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Super king watermelon and royal gold cantaloupe. Got it. Also, we have a special today on bulk orders. You get 10% off. No thanks. I only need two packets of each. Well, they come in packs of three for $3.78. Unit 7, 
Plant growth. Exercise five, page seventeen. Quinoa on the rise. Few plants have as much protein as quinoa, and it can grow in many environments. For that reason, it's become popular with gardeners and commercial farmers alike. Check out the following tips to grow quinoa at home. Quinoa requires full sun to conduct photosynthesis. Sow seeds where the plant will get plenty of light. Provide at least ten inches between rows to give the roots plenty of space. If you maintain growth charts, you'll notice that quinoa grows slowly at first, but when the stem reaches about twelve inches, the buds will flower. The plant is ready for harvest when the leaves drop. Only the seed heads will remain. These can be stripped from the branches with little effort. Remove and dry the seeds for your first quinoa harvest. Gardeners Monthly. Exercises six and seven, page seventeen. Susan, you planted quinoa for the first time this year, didn't you? I did. I was worried at first, but it seems okay now. Worried? Why? It was growing so slowly, but it just takes a while for the buds to flower. Oh, so they're doing well. Yeah, they are. We expect to harvest them next week. That's great. How much do you expect to harvest? Well, we only planted a few acres, so probably two thousand pounds or so. Unit eight, harvest. Exercise five, page nineteen. Reynolds Harvesting Harvest Summary Report Farm zero zero two four Crops Hay and Wheat Harvest Date. Zero six twenty nine. Field number one. Crop hay. Yield zero point five ton per acre. Package type. Round bale. Package weight zero point six tons. Rained on. No. Harvest date zero eight sixteen. Field number two. Crop wheat. Yield thirty bushels per acre. Package type. Bushel. Package weight six hundred bushels. Rained on. Yes. Harvest date ten zero two. Field number three. Crop wheat. Yield eighty bushels per acre. Package type bushel. Package weight one thousand six hundred bushels. Rained on no. Notes. Field number one had the most abundant yield. Field number two was more difficult. It matured later than expected. The farmers reaped several bushels too early. We also experienced an equipment problem during threshing. Some of the wheat was not properly separated from the chaff. Field number three was more successful. Inspectors discarded nearly a ton of unacceptable material from the stacks. Most came out of field number two. Exercises six and seven, page nineteen. Kathy, what's the status on the latest corn harvest? Well, we have fifteen tons for immediate sale. Fifteen tons? How many tons did we sell from the last field? Hmm. Let's see. We sold eleven tons from the last field. That's excellent. Your new planting schedule is working nicely. Yes, it is. We also expect to approve another five tons by Friday. Nice job, Kathy. This is our largest harvest ever. Unit nine storage. Exercise five, page twenty one. Two, T Garcia at GarciaFarms dot com. From C Thompson at GarciaFarms dot com. Subject: Storage problem. Mr. Garcia, we found a problem in bunker silo number thirteen. Mold is growing near the south opening. I suspect two causes. First, there was improper leveling; too much moisture gathered at one end. Secondly, the silo has too much ventilation; it can't dry and cool the silage. As a result, most of the silage is destroyed. The rest is in silage bags for now. Number thirteen is closed until we remove the mold. Should we use one of the tower silos for storage in the meantime? We should also discuss how to fix number thirteen. I don't want this to happen again. Thank you.
Carla Thompson, Storage Manager. Exercises 6 and 7, page 21. Mr Garcia, did you get my email about the bunker silo? I did. How bad is it? It's pretty bad. There's mould all over the place. How did this happen? It was our new assistant. He wasn't trained on levelling. Well, see that he gets trained. Of course. We're also checking the ventilation system. There's too much air moving in there. Use the old tower silo until you fix it and keep me updated. Unit 10. Feed and Nutrients. Exercise 5. Page 23. Posting number 09500. Animal Nutritionist. Date posted January 25th. Employer, Hilford Poultry Farm. Location, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Job description, prepare feed formula for 15 varieties of chicken. Research and select low-cost ingredients with high nutrient content. Balance carbohydrate, fat, protein, vitamin, and mineral content in daily rations. Adjust feed formula as needed. Job qualifications. Master's degree or higher in animal nutrition. Minimum of two years experience, preferably on a poultry farm. Salary. Based on experience, generous benefit package available. Contact information. Brian Walker, 610-555-5905. bwalker at hilford.com. Exercises 6 and 7, page 23. Good morning, Mr. Jordan. I'm Terry Riley. Nice to meet you, Miss Riley. Nice to meet you, too. Please take a seat and we'll get started. Thank you. Did you get my resume? Yes, I did. It looks very good. Tell me about your work at AGM Industries. Well, I work at their pig facility. I create special formulas for high-protein feed. Interesting. Now, applicants must have experience with poultry. Have you ever worked with chickens? Yes, in my previous job. It was at Reynolds Farms. Unit 11. Housing Animals. Exercise 5, page 25. Proper Animal Housing Methods. May 1st, 2011, by Ben Keller. Here are some tips for how to properly house animals. I will use my hog barn as an example. The ideas apply to coops and pens as well. Animals with proper housing are in their comfort zones. They are healthier and more productive than animals with poor housing. First, make sure the enclosure matches the space requirements of the animal. You also need to know the animal's critical temperatures. Install automated heating and cooling to prevent heat stress and cold stress. Don't forget to have a good waste management system. Slotted floors provide a simple way to keep your animal's living space clean. Exercises 6 and 7, page 25. I think we need a new barn. What's wrong with this one? First, the ventilation isn't very good. I agree with you there. It's too hot in here during the summer. And don't forget, we're getting 20 more cows in May. That's a good point. We'll need more space then. I'll talk with the builder tomorrow. Let's estimate the space requirements first. Unit 12. Breeding. Exercise 5, page 27. Today's Breeder. Established 1978. Tom's Cattle Breeding Service. Abilene, Texas. 498-555-49499. We have 20 Black Angus bulls available for breeding. Each bull has a detailed sire summary and complete pedigree. All are of high breeding value. Schedule an appointment to discuss your needs. We will help you with trait selection. We are 85% accurate in predicting heritability of most traits. Do you want a high rate of gain? Do you need strong musculature? Consider our bulls. You get a computer printout of the expected progeny difference, EPD. We can also provide information about each bull's progeny. Call us today. Exercises 6 and 7, page 27. Here are pictures of all of our bulls. 
What traits do you want in the offspring? Well, I have a dairy herd, so I'd like to increase milk production. This Holstein might interest you. Many of his progeny are prize milk cows. Really? Can I see his sire summary? Of course. I'll get you a copy. How much do you charge for breeding? That depends. I give a discount for more than twenty cows. I see. That's far more than I need. Unit thirteen: Slaughter and Processing. Exercise five, page twenty-nine. Jacobson's Butchering Company, located at one hundred and forty-three First Street, three one two five 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 two one five four. At Jacobson's, we believe in humane slaughter and safe practices. Only trained professionals perform the slaughtering. We inspect all animals for disease before butchering. Our processing fees are as follows: kill fees, beef, fifty dollars per head; hog, thirty-five dollars per head; lamb, twenty-five dollars per head. Cut fees. Each cut is price per pound. Beef, thirty-five cents per pound. Hogs, forty cents per pound. Lamb, thirty-five cents per pound. Not only do we process meat, but we also treat hides. No part of the animal is wasted. Ask about our all-natural dog and cat foods made from offal. Exercises six and seven. Page twenty-nine. Jacobson's Butchering Company. How may I help you? Hi, I have cattle that I need slaughtered. Okay, we can do that. How many are there? I have twenty. What's your kill fee per head? For cattle, it's fifty dollars per head. That's not bad. Do you do cuts as well? Yes, we provide cuts. It costs thirty-five cents per pound. Great. I'd like to schedule an appointment. Unit fourteen: Cultivation and planting equipment. Exercise five, page thirty-one. Classifieds: Used farming equipment for sale. Used broadcast seeder for sale. Spread your seeds and fertilizer with ease. It's reliable and only one year old. If interested, call and ask for Jim Drury. Six one seven five 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 three nine five eight. Buy a nineteen fifty four John Deere tractor. Great pulling power. Special price if you buy our used planter or transplanter. Six one seven five 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 two one five six. Ask for Linda. Want perfect soil? Buy a rototiller or cultivator for less. Both machines are gently used. Call Dennis Fisk at six two seven five 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 three four zero two. Stone picker for sale. Save your back and buy today. Call J Henry six one seven five 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 two nine four eight. Need a seed drill or harrow for planting? We have two great machines waiting for you. Call Maya Till at six two seven five 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 two three nine five. Preparing fields, used chisel plow and culti packer for sale. Call six two seven five 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 nine eight nine eight for more details. Exercises six and seven, page thirty one. Hello, is Mr Henry available? This is Mr Henry speaking. Can I help you? Yes, I'm calling about your listing, the one about the stone picker. Oh yes. Well, it's still available, and it's in good condition. Oh, good. What size rocks can it move? Anything between two and twenty-five inches. And how much is it? I'm asking four thousand dollars. That's almost the price of a new unit. Well, we didn't use it much. Still, that's a bit much for me. I'll pass for now. Thanks. Unit fifteen, harvest equipment. Exercise five, page thirty-three. Finneman's harvesting and baling. Call four eight two five 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 two one one five to schedule services. Finneman's offers a wide range of services. 
We provide custom harvesting and grain transportation, hay baling and more. Services for grain crops. We have the best combine harvesters and gleaners around. If you want your grain transported, we can help. Chaser bins or gravity wagons transport your grain from field to storage. We have grain augers and conveyor belts for rent too. We make moving grain easy. Silage. Our forage harvesters are perfect for clearing a field. Don't waste the plant remains after harvest. Rent a forage harvester and make silage. Hay. We provide hay baling. We bring our balers to you. Bale wrappers are available on request. Don't wait for your hay to dry. Ask about our hay conditioners. Exercises 6 and 7, page 33. Are we ready to start harvesting, Jessica? I think so. The combine harvesters are in the field already. Good. What about the wagons? The gravity wagons are attached to the tractor. We're set. Great. But we only have three wagons. They'll get full fast. I thought of that. I have the grain auger ready too. Excellent. I want these fields harvested by three o'clock. OK, boss. I'll let everyone know. Glossary Aeration Agriculture Animal Nutritionist Annual Arid Bale Bale Wrapper Baler Barn Biennial Bone Branch Breeding Breeding value Broadcast cedar Bud Bulk Bunker silo Bushel Butcher Byproduct Carbohydrate Cereal Chaff Chaser bin Chisel plow Clay Cold stress Combine harvester Comfort zone Conveyor belt Cool Coop Critical temperature Crop Culti packer Cultivate Cultivator Cut Days to maturity Ditch Domesticate Dormancy Drought Drought resistant Dry Expected progeny difference, EPD Farm Farmer's market Fat Feed Flowering Forage harvester Fruit Germinate Gleaner Grain auger Gravity wagon Groundwater Growth chart Hard coat Harrow Harvest 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 Hay conditioner Head Heat stress Hemp Heritability 
hide, hooves, humane, humus, hybrid, industrial crop, inspect, irrigate, irrigation, kill fee, leaf, leather, legume, leveling, loam, mature, meat, melon, milk, mineral, moisture, mold, nutrient, nutrition, offal, parent material, pedigree, pen, photosynthesis, plant, planter, poultry, process, produce, progeny, protein, rainfall, rain fed, rate of gain, ration, reap, rendering, root, rototilla, sand, seed, seed drill, seed vigor, seedling, shortage, silage bag, silt, sire summary, slaughter, slotted floor, soil, soil structure, soil texture, sow, sowing method, space requirement, stack, stem, stone picker, storage, tallow, threshing, ton, tower silo, tractor, trait selection, transplanter, tuber, vegetable, ventilation, vitamin, waste management, water cycle, water supply, wool, yield. Book 2 Unit 1. Beef Industry. Exercise 5, page 5. Cattle Farmer Monthly June. Is raising grass-fed cattle the way to go? Marvin Harris. Grass-fed beef is in high demand. Many consumers say it tastes better than grain-fed beef. And they're willing to pay more for it. The downside of grass-fed beef is the cost. Grasses have a lower feed conversion efficiency than corn or soy. Cattle in pastures are also less likely to receive growth hormones. Thus, it takes longer for them to gain mass than their corn or soy-fed counterparts. Furthermore, they do not receive antibiotics and can get sick more easily. Finally, corn-fed herds often produce higher grades of beef. However, 
There are methods to counteract those shortcomings. Some grass-fed cattle forage in pastures for the first few years of life. Before shipping them to a processing facility, ranchers send them to a feedlot for grain finishing. For approximately six months, they receive special feed rations to bring them up to market weight rapidly. Exercises six and seven, page five. I'm thinking about making a big change with the cattle. What exactly are you thinking about changing? Well, grass-fed beef sales are up these days. It's the new trend. Are you suggesting we switch to grass-fed? I'm thinking about it. I don't think that's a good idea. The cattle will take longer to reach market weight. I understand that. It'll take longer and it'll cost more. I hope you'll reconsider. Well, that's not all. I'd like to stop giving them antibiotics and growth hormones as well. That could be a big mistake. We could lose a lot of money on sick and small cows. I realise that, but we can also charge a lot more for grass-fed, hormone-free beef. I think it's risky, but we can try it. Unit two, swine industry. Exercise five, page seven. Journal of Livestock Production, Volume Twelve, Issue Four, Spring two thousand and eleven. Effective use of space in swine farming. Dr. Carol Braun and Dr. Charles Pierce. Many swine farms do not provide optimal space arrangements. Turner, two thousand and nine. We studied twenty sow farms to learn about the best space arrangements in use today. Below are the findings from our research. The space requirements are different depending on the type of farm. Nevertheless, it appears important to provide more than the minimally required static space. Otherwise, hogs tend to be sicker and less productive. In farrow-to-finish farms, providing social space is advisable. When sows have adequate social space, they produce healthier litters. In the case of farrow to nursery farms, providing social space does not add additional value. Therefore, we found that it is sufficient to provide adequate dynamic space. Exercises six and seven, page seven. I'm worried. Our sows aren't as productive as they used to be. It started when we changed those pens to storage space. Yeah, the sows seem restless with less room to move around. You might be onto something. What if we increase their social space? I don't know. We don't have much room as it is. Well, I read an interesting article about this problem. It said social space makes a big difference in farrow to finish farms like ours. I guess we overlooked that when we used those pens for storage. Well, we can fix it. Let's get all the storage out of those pens. We can combine a few other pens so the sows can interact. That's not a bad idea. But what can we do about storage? I think we can make some room in the old barn. Good thinking. Unit three, poultry industry. Exercise five, page nine. Cluck Farms, home, about us, our products, rates, contact us. Welcome to Cluck Farms. We are a primary breeder of twenty-seven varieties of commercial chickens. We provide hens and roosters to over four hundred operations nationwide. Depending on your needs, we can provide you with chickens ranging from one-week-old chicks to one-year-old pullets. In addition to breeding. We operate a small production facility. Our layers produce only the best eggs. All of our broilers and roasters are raised in a free-range manner. We are available to consult with poultry operations in neighbouring states. With 60 years' experience, we can advise you on intensive farming methods, free-range techniques, and effective litter removal. Call us today to take a tour of our hatcheries. Exercises six and seven, page nine. Thanks for calling Cluck Farms. How may I help you? Hi, I'd like to order some chicks. Is there a particular breed you're interested in? I'm not exactly sure. I have a small farm, and I'd like to raise a dozen or so chickens free range. Well, we have a few good options: meat or egg production. 
Could you say that again? Are the chickens going to be used for meat or egg production? Probably both. I want the hens to lay eggs for a few years, but I'll occasionally slaughter them for meat. Maybe one or two a year. In that case, I'd recommend Iowa Blue or Delaware. Both produce excellent eggs and grow into roasters quickly. Did you say roosters or roasters? Roasters. Both breeds can grow rather large. They make good roaster chickens. Oh, I see. Well then, I'll take a half dozen chicks of each. Unit four, dairy industry. Exercise five, page eleven. Colchester Family Dairy Farm. About us. Colchester Family Dairy Farm is located in Burnville, Ohio. Founded in 1882 by Roger Colchester, our farm is still run by the Colchester family. Our facilities. Our main barn houses a milk herd of 75 Holsteins. In addition, we have a nursery barn where bull calves and heifers are raised until they are sold. The milking machines in our milking parlor are the best available. They can send 50 gallons a minute from udders to storage through our milk pipeline. What we do: our farm produces milk and milk products, none of which contain RBST. We sell four varieties of milk and make our own cheese and butter. Our commitment to quality. Every gallon of milk produced at our farm is pasteurized and homogenized. We test each batch for quality. If it doesn't pass our rigorous testing, we don't sell it. Exercises six and seven, page eleven. I think it's time for this heifer to leave the nursery barn. Really? Do you think she's ready to join the milk herd? I do. She's been in the heifer herd for a pretty long time. That's true. But I don't think she's ready to have a calf. Why do you say that? She's almost two years old. That's the right age, if you ask me. Well, age is important, but it's not our only concern. Have you weighed her lately? No, I haven't. Is there a problem with her weight? It's not a problem exactly. It's just that she's not quite heavy enough to join the milk herd. Fair enough. But we need to get her weight up then. Have you increased her feed rations? No, we haven't. Let's start with that. If we can get another twenty or thirty pounds on her, we'll move her into the milk herd. Sound good? Yes, that's a good plan. Unit five, sheep industry. Exercise five, page thirteen. Cloudhaven Sheep Farm. Galton Industries is proud to introduce our newest venture, the Cloudhaven Sheep Farm. Building on our success with the Cloudhaven Cattle Yard, we have created a lambing facility that offers the same quality production. Cloudhaven oversees three flocks, combining for a total of approximately three thousand head of sheep. We supply both feeder lambs and market slaughter lambs. Thanks to our accelerated lambing process, we can meet the demands of any customer, large or small. Our ewes produce one to two lambs per year. During each lambing period, we keep half of the lambs for finishing. The others are distributed to meet seasonal market demands. This is all made possible by our system of confinement lamb production. Our experienced managers ensure the safety and quality of lambs inside our facility. Not only does this process increase quality, but it also helps keep our costs down. Unlike range production operations, confinement production means we have zero losses to predation, and we pass those savings on to our customers. So come see us at Cloudhaven Sheep Farm for quality sheep at low prices. Exercises six and seven, page thirteen. Cloudhaven Sheep Farm. This is Michael speaking. How can I help you? Hi, Michael. My farm is expanding operations, and we're looking to get some feeder lambs. Well, we can certainly provide that. About how many animals are you thinking of? I'd like at least three hundred head. Can you complete an order that large? Oh, definitely. We try to keep a steady population of about three thousand. Of course, only half of those are feeder lambs. The rest are market slaughter. I see. Well, that's great news. In that case, let's talk about prices. Right now, 
You're looking at eighty-five dollars per one hundred pounds. Eighty-five dollars per one hundred pounds. That's a really good deal. Let's place the order. Unit six: Equine industry. Exercise five, page fifteen. Shady stables. Shady Stables is East City's premier equestrian facility. Our ten-acre property features two barns with eight stalls in each. Every stall is connected to a private run. We board stallions and mares for a small monthly fee that includes feed and access to all our riding areas as well as local riding trails. We also have private boarding areas for brood mares and foals. In addition to our boarding services, we have an on-site veterinarian to meet all of your horse's needs, including preventative disease control. Routine care includes foot and dental exams and a comprehensive vaccination schedule. Shady Stables also offers professional training services. Our trainers can assist you with everything from halter breaking and sacking out to bridling and saddling. Each trainer has a minimum of five years' experience training horses. They also offer private riding lessons for inexperienced riders. Call Shady Stables today to learn more about our facilities and staff. Exercises six and seven, page fifteen. Did you work with Snowflake today? I did, and I have to say, I think she's one of the best mares we've got. Really? Why do you say that? Well, just yesterday I started sacking her out. She didn't seem scared at all when I put the blanket on her. That's rare. What about today? The same thing happened today. You know, I think she might be ready for saddling. Have you bridled her yet? No. I guess I should probably work on that before I try to saddle her. Definitely. And that reminds me, she needs to see the vet. Is it time for more shots already? I think so. Doctor Roberts, the veterinarian, keeps track of the vaccination schedule. Okay, I'll talk to him first thing tomorrow. Unit seven, apiculture, exercise five, page seventeen. Home, about us, products, orders, contact, sweet rewards, beekeeper supply. Whether you're considering beekeeping as a hobby or a career. Sweet Rewards Beekeeper Supplies has everything you need. We carry a wide selection of beehive frames to house your colony. From top bar hives to traditional skeps, we have hives for any type of apiary. In addition to hive frames, we also carry a complete line of beekeeper tools. We have several sizes of smokers, as well as liquid smoke. And cold smoke aerosols. When it's time to harvest honey, take advantage of our new line of honey jars. We even serve beekeepers who prefer traditional methods. For these customers, we carry honeycomb presses. Finally, no beekeeping operation is complete without protective gear. We have bee suits in a variety of sizes and designs, including square veils. Round veils and shoulder veils. Stop in today and see what makes Sweet Rewards the first choice for professional beekeepers. Exercises six and seven, page seventeen. Can I help you find anything today? Yes, I'm looking for liquid smoke. Okay, that's right over here by the smokers. Can I ask what type of apiary you have? I just got a wooden beehive frame. Why do you ask? Well, liquid smoke can be a problem with wooden hives. Really? Why is that? It leaves stains on wood. Also, you have to be really careful when you use it. The liquid can ruin your honey. Oh, that's too bad. Is there something else that you'd recommend? I'd go with cold smoke aerosols. Will those stain the wood in my hive? No, but you still need to be careful and avoid spraying them into the honeycomb. Okay, I'll take four of those, please. Unit eight, classification and composition. Exercise five, page nineteen. KCI Laboratories, soil analysis report, prepared for Sam Jones, 
prepared by Kim Horton. We took soil samples from three proposed farm locations. See the chart below for details. The samples indicate substantially different soils at each location. The table below summarizes the texture, composition and classification of the samples. No highly organic soils were found. Both sites O1 and O3 offer desirable soil. However, in both cases we recommend adding peat. That will make them more suitable for agriculture. The soil at site O2 is not suitable for irrigated agriculture. Sample Site O1 Grain texture Fine grained Composition Percentage of sand 5 Percentage of silt 15 Percentage of clay 80 Unified soil classification system Symbol CL Group name Clay Sample Site O2 Grain texture Coarse grained Composition Percentage of sand 75 Percentage of silt 21 Percentage of clay 4 Unified soil classification system Symbol SM Group name Silty sand Sample Site O3 Grain texture Medium grained Composition Percentage of sand, 2. Percentage of silt, 68. Percentage of clay, 32. Unified soil classification system. Symbol MH, group name. Elastic silt. Exercises 6 and 7, page 19. Hello, KCI Laboratories. Kim Horton speaking. Hi, Kim. This is Sam Jones at Brayton Farming. I just looked over the results from the soil analysis you sent. Do you have any questions? Actually, yes, I do. Just so I'm clear, the sample from the north field has a lot of clay in it. That's correct. So if I planted wheat there, it would hold water well? Yes, it has very fine-grained clay, so when it rains, the soil will hold the water very well. If I understand you correctly, then I wouldn't need to irrigate that field. That's correct, as long as the rainfall is normal. Of course. There's one more thing. The Eastfield sample showed it's very sandy. I just want to make sure that I can irrigate there. You can, but you have to be careful. It will drain quickly. Unit 9. Salts and Acidity. Exercise 5, page 21. The Midland Herald. Monday, August 14th. Farmers struggle against salt and acid. Waynesboro. Martin Harrison has been a farmer for half a century. Recently, his crops have grown poorly. The culprit? Rising salinity and acidity, along with decreasing sodicity. Harrison's farm is located in Brown County, an area known for its rich farmland with little risk of salinity problems. Historically, the primary salinity of the soils there was low, Soil salinity started to change two years ago, when drought arrived. Farmers began irrigating their fields with well water. That water had high potassium, chloride and sulphur content. At first there were no problems. However, mineral deposits built up. This resulted in the increased secondary salinity of the soil. It also made the soil too acidic. Harrison started to notice problems last summer. His tomato plants died. The soil had become toxic to several other vegetables as well. He now increases the soil's pH value by adding lime. But that is just a temporary solution to the problems caused by irrigation. Until the drought ends, crop yields will suffer. Exercises 6 and 7, page 21. All this irrigated water is making my fields acidic. What about yours? Yeah, I have the same problem. I've heard of a few fixes, though. Have you tried them? Only one so far. I've added lime to my fertiliser. What are the results? Well, 
It's raised the pH to 7.5. That's good, right? It is, and it isn't. It works for now. But the next time I irrigate, that will change again. Do you see what I mean? I do. So are you trying anything else? Not yet. The other options are more expensive and time consuming. It would be easier just to plant crops that like acidic soil, right? Yeah, you're right. You do it once and you're done. I think that's what I'll do next year. Unit 10 The Nitrogen Cycle. Exercise 5, page 23. Nitrogen is a crucial nutrient for growing plants. Without the nitrogen cycle, which restores nutrient poor soil, plants could not survive. During this cycle, nitrogen takes on many forms. It starts in the atmosphere as nitrogen gas. In this form, plants cannot absorb it. That changes after fixation, the next phase of the nitrogen cycle. During fixation, bacteria turn nitrogen into ammonia. In the next phase, mineralization, decomposes in the soil, turn ammonia into nitrites and nitrates, forms of nitrogen that plants can use. Finally, during dentrification, bacteria reduce nitrates back into nitrogen gas. Of course, the nitrogen cycle can also have negative effects. For example, it produces chemicals like nitrous oxide. When this substance leaks into bodies of water, eutrophication occurs. This build-up of algae can ruin a water supply. Unfortunately, commercial farming produces a great deal of such chemicals. A challenge facing modern farmers is to reduce their contribution to this harmful aspect of the nitrogen cycle. Exercises 6 and 7, page 23. So what should we do with the south field? I'm not sure what you mean. Well, this year's yield is pretty low. The soil might be nutrient poor. What do you suggest? We could plant legumes. I'm not following you. Well, I bet the soil is low on nitrogen. We could use legumes as this year's cover crop. Oh, I see. Just have the legumes restore the nitrogen. Exactly. It's better than using too much fertiliser. I don't want our water supply getting damaged. Well, I think that's a good idea. Let's finish up with this year's harvest. We still have a few days left. Sounds good. Then we can sit down and figure out what legumes to plant. Unit 11. Soil Conservation. Exercise 5, page 25. A Guide to Soil Conservation. Without healthy soil, farmers can't produce healthy crops. But soil faces many threats including nutrient depletion and erosion. Fortunately, several methods of soil conservation can turn unhealthy soil into a plant paradise. One method, crop rotation, solves nutrient depletion. Cover crops, or green manure, are rotated with other crops. This process increases the amount of nitrogen in the soil and reverses land degradation. In addition to addressing nutrient depletion, farmers also combat erosion. Several practices can prevent erosion. Planting windbreaks stops topsoil loss from wind. Perimeter runoff control prevents erosion from water. For example, grassways slow water and direct it away from fields. Contour farming techniques, such as key line design, also prevent water from eroding soil. In one method, farmers plough rows perpendicular to hills. The water slows as it reaches the rows, which results in less soil loss. Exercises 6 and 7, page 25. I'm really worried about the soil in the fields. It's looking pretty soggy. Yeah, there's been so much rainfall the past few weeks. The soil is eroding. We have to do something. I agree. But what can we do? I think contour farming is a good option. I'm not sure about that. We'd have to redesign our fields. True, but look at our land. We have so many hills. Well, you have a point there. Contour farming could be good for us in the next few years. 
but we have to do something sooner than that. How about starting with a grassway? I like that. We can buy some sod and install it next weekend. Great. I'll look for some grass suppliers. Good idea. I'll find the best place for the grassway. Unit 12. Preparing, seeding, and planting. Exercise 5, page 27. The Farmer's Guide. Chapter 1. Preparing, seeding, and planting. Although different crops demand different preparation, some practices apply to almost any crop. And what you do before planting is just as important as what you do after. Preparing the topsoil is always key. Test it in late summer to determine if amendments like lime, sulphur or phosphorus are needed to adjust acidity. If the soil is nutrient deficient, add fertilizer. Likewise, most fields require treatment with a herbicide. Waiting two weeks to plant after using some herbicides is recommended. Once the soil temperature is right, planting can begin. The seeding rate is determined by the ideal seeds per pound and seeds per square foot. Be sure to calculate the appropriate plant density. A miscalculation will result in low emergence. The actual planting of seeds will vary by crop. Broadcast seeding may work for some seeds, while seed drills work better for small grains, such as wheat or oats. Exercises 6 and 7, page 27. James, I want to talk to you about planting the wheat fields next year. OK. What's on your mind? I think we'll adjust our plant density this year. Really? Why is that? Well, our production has been down. We didn't produce nearly as much this year as we did last year. That's true. You think it's because we planted too many seeds close together? Yes, exactly. I know we were trying to grow more wheat per field, but it's having the opposite effect. So what do you suggest? We'll just reduce our seeding rate and plant fewer seeds per square foot. I guess that would work, but we can do more to increase production. What were you thinking of? Well, just the usual. Adding amendments and fertiliser, things like that. Unit 13. Climate and weather. Exercise 5, page 29. Vegetables. Seeds Unlimited. Poblano pepper, $3.19 per pack. Plant in, full sun, soil temperature, 68 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Description, poblanos are flavorful peppers that are perfect for spicing sauces. They grow in warm areas with moderate humidity. Check your hardiness zone to make sure poblanos grow in your region. Plant seeds about 12 weeks before last frost. A local long-range forecast will help you determine when to plant. Poblanos need some water, but just to keep the soil slightly damp. Do not overwater. Harvest after 14 to 16 weeks. Famosa cabbage, $3.79 per pack. Plant in, partial shade, soil temperature, 59 to 64.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Description. The Formosa cabbage is a crispy vegetable that grows in cool climates. Formosas need lots of water, so areas with high precipitation are ideal for growing. Use plenty of mulch to maintain healthy soil moisture. These cabbages need only partial sun. Plant six weeks before last frost. Harvest in late autumn for best results. Exercises 6 and 7, page 29. Excuse me, can you help me pick out some seeds? Certainly, ma'am. What type of crop do you want to grow? I'm going to plant some lettuce. I found these Scotsdale lettuce seeds. Oh, I wouldn't plant the Scotsdale. It needs a much warmer climate. I recommend the Waldman's lettuce. Oh, really? Why is that? The Waldman's is very hardy. It can handle the colder weather around here. That sounds great. So, would you plant them right away? Or would you wait? I'd wait until the low temperatures are at about 4 degrees Celsius. I mean, the Waldman's lettuce can tolerate cold weather, but we haven't had our last frost yet. OK. Thanks for all your advice. I'll take a dozen packs of the Waldman's. Unit 14. Pricing. 
Exercise five, page thirty-one. Dear Mr. Kowalski, our office analysed your business practices as you requested. We have a few suggestions to improve your pricing strategy. We believe that it is time to consider pricing for competition. There are several new produce sellers in your area. Some are offering lower prices for the same vegetables that you sell. For example, you sell spinach for five dollars and forty-nine cents per pound. Most other sellers are offering spinach for less than five dollars per pound. They attract customers who want large quantities by offering pricing for value. We suggest moderate price decreases that maintain pricing for profit. As long as your prices remain higher than your cost of production, your business will make money. We also think it is time for you to expand beyond direct marketing. Profits will remain limited if you only sell at the local farmers market. We recommend exploring a strategy of indirect marketing through larger area supermarkets. Our office will continue to analyze supply and demand in your area. We will provide updated recommendations based on the most current trends. Sincerely, Nancy Curry, Professional Consultant. Exercises six and seven, page thirty-one. Mr. Kowalski, did you have a chance to read our recommended business improvements? I did, Miss Curry. Can you give me some more information about the competition's pricing? Of course. Your spinach goes for five dollars and forty-nine cents per pound. All the other sellers in your area sell spinach for at least fifty cents less per pound. Wow, I didn't realize how expensive my products are. What changes do you suggest? We came up with some estimates. You can lower your spinach price to four dollars eighty-nine cents per pound and still cover your cost of production. That sounds like a big decrease. Are you sure that's a good idea? At first, you'll only lower the price for customers who buy ten pounds or more. So I'll still sell smaller quantities at the current price. That's right. If this pricing strategy improves sales, then you'll lower the overall price later. Okay, Miss Curry, let's give it a try. Unit fifteen, government intervention. Exercise five, page thirty-three. Government promises help for wheat growers. Government officials introduced a plan this week to enhance wheat production. Spokesperson Harriet Green responded to reporters' questions on Friday. She said the government is committed to improving economic conditions in wheat-growing regions. Green said the plan supports the small farmers that the world's food and fibre industry relies on. The plan does have critics. But Green responded that improving the wheat industry improves economies everywhere. She stated that the industry's decline negatively affects people around the world. The plan is to decrease supply by employing a strategy of adjusting production. Leaving some wheat fields fallow should prevent excessive surpluses and wasted resources. Hopefully, this will increase market demand. Additionally, the government will implement various forms of price support. This includes establishing price floors, raising quotas, and reducing tariffs on exports. Finally, the government is setting up a department to address foreign trade enhancement. The department will identify ways to increase wheat trade worldwide. Exercises six and seven, page thirty-three. Mr. Jones. I think I lost the planting schedule for Field Four B. It's not in my notes. No, you didn't lose it, Margaret. We're not planting any wheat in Four B this year. Really? Why not? It's part of the government plan to adjust production. But won't we lose money if we don't grow enough? Actually, the government is paying us to produce less. I had no idea. Why are they doing that? They want to decrease the supply. See, right now there's a surplus of wheat. So prices are low, but if everyone produces less wheat, the supply will fall. Do you see what I mean? I think so. And if the supply falls, the prices go up too, right? Exactly. In the meantime, we'll just plant some cover crops in Field Four B. Exercises six and seven, page thirty-four.